This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in the country. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start with one of the last bits of EV news from last year, namely exactly which vehicles sold the best throughout the year in the USA. And as data from industry analysts Cox Automotive shows, the most popular electric vehicles of 2023 in the US were the Tesla Model Y and Tesla Model 3, frankly by a massive margin, accounting for the lion's share of all EVs sold in North America. In third place, the Chevrolet Bolt EV and EUV, with the Ford Mustang Mark E in fourth, the Volkswagen ID4 in fifth, and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 in sixth, showing a strong demand for mid-priced, mid-size EVs. The Rivian R1S, Ford F-150 Lightning, Tesla Model X and BMW i4 completed the top 10 respectively. And frankly, I think this EV sales chart is fantastic as it shows that people prefer more affordable models over more expensive ones. Starting over last weekend, CES 2024 grabbed a lot of the automotive world's attention and we have plenty of new stories from the show to share this week. First up, Honda, which unveiled two new concept cars at the show. As is usually the case with CES, the two vehicles, the Honda Zero Series Concepts, the Saloon and Space Hub, feature a lot of gadgetry, vehicle smarts and in-car tech. As is also usually the case, we shouldn't expect either vehicle to make it to production in anywhere near concept form. And personally, I'm not a fan of the massive angular design of both vehicles, not to mention the 80s Lamborghini vibes of the Saloon. But Honda promises that it will be bringing a production vehicle to market in 2026 based on said saloon, which will apparently be pretty close to the concept in its design. Watch this space. Just a few years ago, rental company Hertz went all in on EVs, announcing massive partnerships with Tesla and similar ones with other automakers to transition its rental fleet to electric. This week, however, we learned that Hertz has begun to sell off some of its first on the fleet Tesla Model 3s, with some vehicles, their standard range variants, being offered on its used car portal for under 18,000 US dollars. And that's before you factor in a $4,000 used car tax rebate from the US federal government. Some news outlets are claiming it's because Hertz is dumping EVs all in, but it's worth noting that Hertz, like most rental firms, sells ex-rental vehicles after a few years of service. And while it has cooled its jets on the rate of EV adoption it has planned, has criticised Tesla's repair costs and admitted in an SEC filing this week that the proceeds of selling off those early EVs might partially fund acquisition of new internal combustion engine vehicles for the fleet, the company maintains it's still interested in an EV future despite plans to reduce the number of EVs on its current fleet. But what do you think? Let me know below. We're back to CES now with another concept of reveal, this time from Kia, which revealed its Kia platform beyond vehicle solutions this week at the event. The concept vehicles, which the company says are, quote, intended to enhance versatility, catering to business and individuals, end quote, are designed to share a modular core platform and can offer everything from delivery vehicle and luggage carrying capabilities to passenger shuttles in enhancing mobility options for wheelchair users and much more. Just like concept car reveals of recent CES shows, all PBV vehicles are imagined to offer autonomous driving. And while Kia is keen to point out its future vehicle vision is one it would like to make a commercial reality, we feel these vehicles are very much nowhere near production ready. 
In response to changes at the EPA when it comes to vehicle range and efficiency tests, Tesla has tweaked its range estimates for its entire lineup to make them more achievable in the real world. While Tesla has been criticized by some analysts for being very optimistic about its real world range, the way range test procedures were laid out by the EPA were frankly to blame. And the change in those procedures has caused Tesla to tweak its range estimates. For the most part, Tesla's US range ratings have dropped by between 10 and 20 miles or 16 to 32 kilometers, which frankly is still well within the margin of error that we'd like to hope most EV drivers are learning to drive with because just like an internal combustion engine vehicle, external forces like weather and driving style can make a much larger impact on real world range than those tweaked figures. VinFast was out in full force at CES this week, unveiling not just a new global compact SUV, but a pickup truck and an electric bicycle as well. First up, the VF3, an electric compact crossover that VinFast says will go on sale in the US market. Smaller than most of the competition, it's being called a mini SUV and offers seating for four and a target range of, quote, over 125 miles per charge. If it's priced right, it could be a very important vehicle. At the other end of the spectrum came the VF Wild, a crew cab pickup truck concept which previews a production pickup truck from the brand. Following in the tyre tracks of many other electric pickups we've seen, it offers pass-through rear access to the back of the cabin through the bed, which means eight feet items can be carried without putting the tailgate down. Vinfast also unveiled a brand new e-bike. We might all like to hope that people are deciding to buy electric vehicles because they're far, far better for the world around us. But the reality is that money speaks. At least, that's the verdict of consultancy firm Deloitte, which says in a new study published this week that the number one reason people make the switch to electric isn't because they want to minimise climate change, but because EVs are cheaper to own and operate in the long term. In its latest survey, which polled just over 1,000 individuals, it concluded that 66% of people who go electric do so because of lower fuel and maintenance costs. That said, the survey, like many before it, also discovered that the primary barrier to EV adoption is high sticker price. If gasoline prices rise, it suggests we could see EV sales soar, but only if sticker prices also fall. Last week, we told you about the deal stuck between diesel engine manufacturer Cummins, the US EPA and the state of California. In that, the former agreed to pay 1.67 billion US dollars in fines for installing cheat devices in diesel engines. While so-called cheat devices, as some of you note, are just a software subroutine designed to cheat in diesel emissions tests, this week we learned that the fallout of the settlement is much larger than first thought. In addition to the settlement fine, Cummins also agreed to pay $325 million in environmental damage charges and, working with RAM, will recall 600,000 diesel pickups which are currently not in compliance with EPA emissions requirements. Expect this one to rumble on for a while. From an automaker doing very badly to one doing very well now. Or rather, the Hyundai Motor Group, parent company of Hyundai, Kia and Genesis brands. With all of the sales data for last year now officially tabulated, Hyundai-Kia's combined electric vehicle sales soared past rivals Ford and General Motors to secure it the second place in the US EV sales chart for last year. Tesla, in first place, sold more than 650,000 vehicles in North America last year, accounting for 55% of the 1.2 million EVs sold in the US. But thanks to strong Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 sales, not to mention Kia EV6 and EV9 sales, 8% of all new EVs sold last year in the US came from the Korean firm, with 117 thousand EVs sold. More fantastic news next, this time from the world of renewable energy. 
That's because the IEA, the International Energy Agency, has concluded that the world has a chance of meeting its renewable energy goals as set out at COP28. While much of COP28 was met with disappointment by environmentalists and journalists, me included, the amount of renewable energy brought online last year around the world, a record of nearly 510 gigawatts, sets a path that means we could, as a global society, reach the target of tripling our renewable energy generation by 2030. And while there's been a lot of criticism for China from other nations for not doing enough to go green, it is worth noting that the People's Republic of China was the world's leader in solar projects last year. It installed as many solar generation plants last year as the whole world did in 2022. Onwards and upwards. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should very much check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can sign up with, and of course, how to get clean, green, renewable energy at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. We can't be in CES week without covering a car that's become something of a feature at CES in the last few years. The Sony Honda Mobility Alfila, debuted initially as a technology demonstration vehicle and built by Sony back in 2020, the Alfila has grown to a fully-fledged vehicle that Sony and Honda plan to bring to production in the near future. And while it does still have a lot of onboard tech, this week it learned a new trick to wow the crowds – full remote control driving. Sure, it might have been a bit of a CES gimmick, but during Sony's hour-long CES keynote, the company's CEO drove the latest iteration of the Alfila prototype out on stage, not by getting behind the wheel, but by grabbing hold of a Sony PlayStation controller. I feel very old. And finally. We here at the channel love electric bicycles and electric scooters and firmly believe that they have a massively important part to play in the electrification of today's transportation. But we also know that poor global standards for e-bike and scooter battery packs has meant that we're seeing an influx of poorly built and terrifyingly designed e-scooters and e-bikes hit the market with some truly horrifying tales of often budget e-bike battery packs catching fire and causing buildings to burn and causing far worse to humans. That, in turn, has led to e-bikes and e-scooters being banned on some public transit systems around the world and even at some institutions. This week, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL for short, became the latest place to ban e-bikes and e-scooters on campus over fears of poorly built battery packs catching fire. I know I've said this before many times, but the solution here is better global standards. But that would require world governments to work together and history, as well as current state of affairs, prove that they're not always very good at that. Now, are they? And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it is time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make that switch and you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the nation beautiful for generations to come. Go on, make it a New Year's resolution. We're only in the second week of January, after all. I'll be back next week as usual. But in the meantime, be sure to check out other great content on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. He's come back from his break and he's always doing something fun. And frankly, I'm a little jealous of the awesome stuff he gets to do. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of your week. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.